we're not agile. We don't have agility in the system. Now let's extrapolate. Uh, 2003, four, five, six, seven, around this time we start to develop, well, not me personally, but others develop the concepts of, of DevOps. So great, now we have the ability to deploy every Amazon statistic, 11 seconds, 11.7 seconds, something like that. So if we're being, if we're, if the constraint to agility is no longer operations, uh, remember the corollary, there is always a constraint. Where is the constraint in your system? All right. Now, Naresh, you said you were an agile coach. All right. Fantastic role being an agile coach, but are you coaching the right teams? All right. And in the organizations that you're moving to, are you coaching the right teams? Is that part of the organization that is becoming agile? Is that right, the constraint to agility in the system? Because in my experience, IT and soft and technology has reached diminishing returns in the level of agility, not in every organization, right? There are definitely organizations where the constraint is still in technology. So in the Business Agility Institute, a large part of what we're talking about is creating agility, not just in technology, but in the entire organizational system from HR, finance, sales, marketing, uh, leadership, business operations, business governance. Right? We want agility and the values and principles espoused by the Agile Manifesto to infuse throughout an entire organization. Right? And this is where a lot of you come into play because a question that I'm often asked is transformation top down or bottom up, right? That is the wrong question. And I'm talking to the right, I'm talking to the right audience because the correct metaphor is tea, right? I love my tea. I drink way too much of it. And you don't make tea by putting tea leaves at the top or at the bottom, right? You make tea by infuse, by infusion, right? Tea leaves, a bit of heat, a bit of motion moving around. And there's no point. It's not like, here's a glass of water and here's a glass of tea. And somewhere in the middle, right? this magical point where it was water, now it's tea. No, it is levels of tea, it's strength. The question is, in terms of your organization, how strong is the agility? Not do you have it or not, but what is that level of strength? So in the Institute, what we do as a professional association, our job is to inspire. Our job is to get companies, the companies that you're working with, to get people like yourselves thinking about agility and, and thinking about agility beyond technology and giving you the tools and the information required to, well, implement all of this. So uh, my invitation to you, and I'll stop talking very shortly, but my invitation to you is use the resources of the Institute. We have a very comprehensive library with hundreds of case studies and references. We have a global network of thought leaders and experts who are pretty much all of them always willing to um, talk and share and, and connect with people in the community, especially those with passion. We're a volunteer led organization. So we do a lot of things like uh, uh, we have research, uh, we undertake research, we have 11 research teams and we have uh, communities, meetups and not-for-profit chapters. Um, we have four not-for-profit chapters, none in India, um, Peru, Chile, Colombia, and the UK. Um, and we're just, uh, but we have five, six meetups, uh, informal communities in India from Chandigarh, Bangalore, obviously, um, uh, Pune, Chennai, um, was it, uh, Hyderabad and uh, the Delhi NCR one closed down. Um, and there's a six, which is embarrassing. I cannot remember where that is. <laughs> um, so all, um, uh, all rambling aside, the key here is I want you to start thinking about agility and your role and your career, not just in terms of like where, which technology function am I coaching next? Right? Because we've hit diminishing returns. The question is, right, which part of the organization are you gonna make a, 
an impact into. And you need to start learning how to talk to HR and finance if you want to be an ag a, a really effective agile coach or change agent or even scrum master in an organization in the next two to five years. So I've rambled a little bit about what is what the hell we're talking about in terms of business agility. Um, so I want to just pause there, take a breath and see who has any questions about their career, what they're doing, the path that they're on. Um, and let's open up a conversation. Hey Evan, uh, Surya this side. Thanks, thanks for, for just briefing us about business agility and, and, and sharing the bits around how you see uh, the, the actual transformation coming into picture. Uh, so right now I'm, I'm also kind of like, I've been with an organization for more than 12 months now. Uh, so when I, when I ventured into, uh, the, the team, I am actually handling, uh, one software development team and one data analytics teams. Now, now, uh, along with that comes the product team. Uh, now actually the product team per se is a product team, but has a project mindset. Now that that's first thing. Along with that, we also have a sales teams, which actually like we have some product offerings, which the sales teams are actually selling. Now, sales team is, is completely in isolation selling stuff. Uh, now, and and somehow the, the buying is not there uh, from a, from a, from a, how do I put it across? Like from a business point of view, the buy-in is just to make things, uh, you know, out of the door and, and just get the revenues. Uh, like a very short term vision, I would say. Uh, but but the problem is how do I integrate all of this? This is a very situational question where, where I'm putting you, but but how do you see at a team level? This is a very, very, uh, you know, I would say very micro question, which I'm which I'm trying to ask, but how do you situation, how do you see a situation like this for a for a change agent like a scrum master uh, who's who's working with a couple of teams? How do you see business agility uh, 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 for, for, for someone like me and, and the, the, uh, how can it help me getting the, those kind of conversations more effortlessly and seamlessly uh, uh, across? Like, uh, how do I make that, that change happen? So that's a very good question. Um, Change happens organically in a lot of organizations. Change is something that is, it is deliberate, but it is not forced. Uh, you can't force people across the organization to be agile. So what you need to do is to be that, um, uh, to, to be that lever, right? the one that makes different parts of the organization think that they need a little bit of what you've got. And there's three ways that you can really, uh, uh, there's three ways you can do that effectively. The first is just simply be good at your job. Right? Um, if you are, if you are creating amazing products, if you're listening to your customers, if you're using customer feedback to make better products, if you're hitting your KPIs and OKRs, then other parts of the organization are going to look at you and go, I want what he's doing. Uh, tell me a little bit more about this agile thing that you're, that you're working on. Can I use it? Now, the second is you need to start, for, for those parts, that tea leaf infuses in the water that's around it. Right? The tea leaf can't make another part uh, into tea, at least not yep, yet. Yep. Right? So what you've yep. got to do is those parts of the organization who are around you, right? let's say you're recruiting, which means you have a connection into HR. Right? Let's say that you've got connections into the PMO because there are governance and you're, there's reporting requirements, all that kind of thing. Whatever those areas are in the organization, you've got to ask yourself and perhaps even just ask them, what's their pain points? Because agile is a tool, it is not the goal. Right? Agility is not going to, it, no one's going to become agile or be agile 
right? Because agile is the right thing to do. They're going to be agile because it allows them to achieve something. It's the concept of job to be done, right? Um, mm -hmm. And if you're familiar, if you're unfamiliar with the concept of job to be done, there's some great books and stories about it. But very simply, think about the like the last time you went and bought a drill, right? You don't buy a drill because you want to drill. You buy a drill because you want a hole, right? Yeah. And so the same is true of agile. We don't an organization. HR is not going to be agile because they want to be agile. They're going to be agile because it's going to solve a problem or is going to achieve a benefit for them. So you have to find their pain points and then show them how agility is going to help them to achieve those pain points. And then the third thing um, that's really going to help is you need to become a, uh, there's a concept in economics called goodwill, right? And goodwill is an asset. Right? It is something that is, in, it's tradable. <laughs> uh, if, if you're running a startup, um, uh, you'll actually value how much goodwill you have as part of the assets of the organization. But the point is that you want to be there for other parts of the company where they're hurting so that you build up this bank of goodwill it doesn't matter which part, it just, just it happens slowly. Right? And once you've built up this bank of goodwill, you can start to use and expand your sphere of influence. Right? So you might be one scrum master, you might be one product owner, one agile coach, right? but you have, a, and your sphere of control is very small. But what you want is to build out that sphere of influence larger and larger and larger until such time as the organization looks to you, right? A large part of the organization looks to you for advice and input because they have, there is goodwill. You can, if you need more agility from another division, then the better goodwill they have with you, the more likely they are to acquiesce and go, okay, Tell me more about this agile thing. How can we be more agile? Um, so you've got to build those out. None of these are fast. Uh, it takes time to, to do this, but it is. it doesn't matter who you are and where you are in the organization. Uh, strategically and with careful planning and building out those networks, you can make a difference. You can change a company. Yeah, that, that was a really insightful explanation, Evan. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just try to also see for some resources there on, on business agility. Uh, thanks thanks uh, for, for that insightful. Of course. So, so do check out. So the library that we have is, is very helpful when you have a specific problem. So let's say um, you're having a challenge with HR um, or you have a challenge with attrition, right? like people keep leaving the company. Um, we, we have resources in the library that will show you um, what other companies are doing and what is best practice in order to solve or use agility or business agility to solve attrition problems um, or to, to uh, create agile HR or ag sales marketing, I believe you mentioned early on. You want to look at a, a framework called Sway, um, Selling with Agile, done by a lady out of Russia called Marina Alex, which is pretty much the only agile framework for, um, for, for, for salespeople. So there's a lot of, if you know the right question to ask, if you know the pain that you're trying to solve in the organization or that, you're, that is being expressed by others in the organization, right, then you can find the right resource to, to solve those problems. Cool, cool. Thanks, thanks, Simon. Of course. So who else? Cool. Uh, even we have uh, one question in chat from oh. Srikant. Srikant, um, you're probably going to want to go over and have a chat with Shane Hasty um, over in ICI Agile. Um, so as far as certifications are concerned, there are a small number of credible certifications. ICI Agile and full disclosure, um, ICI Agile is a member of ours. 
they're one of our corporate members. Um, IC Agile has a series, uh, quite a, a number of business agility certifications. I actually helped create some of them. So again, full disclosure. So they're good. I trust them. Um, Scrum Alliance. So uh, those are business agility. If you're looking at agile leadership, you've also got Scrum Alliance, who has their certified agile leader, Cal, um, uh, Cal E, Cal T, and Cal O. They change. It used to be Cal One and Cal Two, and then they changed it about six months ago. And I'm trying to remember what it is. Um, but their Cal certifications are very um, uh, well well respected. Um, if you're working in a scaled agile environment, um, then a, a advanced scaled agile certification sort of leads towards business agility. Um, though it scaled, I see agile as agnostic, so it will teach you about it'll teach you about um, business agility generally. Uh, scaled agile will teach you safe <laughs> and nothing else. So if that's if that's the ecosystem that you're in, go for it. If you're not within that ecosystem, then it's probably not worth going down that path. Um, if you're thinking about agile business agility coaching, first of all, there's no really such thing as a business agility coach. Um, a lot of people call themselves that, but it, it really just means they're an agile coach who knows how to talk to the CFO. Um, but if you are interested in getting into that business level coaching, I would recommend getting the advanced coaching certifications from either IC Agile or the CEC from Scrum Alliance, the Certified Enterprise Coach, because uh, Scrum Alliance has the CTC, Certified Team Coach, and CEC, Enterprise Coach. And of course, Enterprise is at business level. Um, those would be the certifications that I would um, credibly rate. Um, there are obviously a lot of sort of certification providers on the marketplace but when it comes to business agility um, those are the ones that uh, are quite effective i will also say that if you're looking for training and not just certification there are a lot of really amazing people who have good experiences who run training classes um, but which aren't necessarily certified um, I don't know of any who operate in the Indian market. I'm thinking mostly in the US, but depending on time zones, that may still be effective, more or less. So I hope that answered the question. Yeah. So even uh, would you like to share more about the courses that are offered by Business Agility Institute? Oh, uh, we don't offer courses. So, so oh. to clarify. We are not a training provider. We are not a certification provider. We are a professional association. So my invitation is for you to become a member of the Institute and uh, position yourself as a thought leader in business agility, as someone who is pushing agility outside of technology um, and make yourself stand out from other, uh, from other agilists. In terms of, uh, the learning you get from the Institute is from our library and from our research, um, or whether it's as contributing um, or reading and being a part of this. We also run a series of roundtables and events. Um, uh, these are global events where there are really amazing people. If you want to learn about Beyond Budgeting from Beate Bogsnes, literally the author of the book, if you want to learn about agile HR from some of the leaders in that space who've been doing it for the longest time or the creators of the agile marketing manifesto or Marina Alex who created Sway or Mirka Kleiner who did lean agile procurement. We bring these people together and um, we share their insights. So we are a hub. We bring people together. We bring you into that conversation to help share and help you understand what what is the future of both our industry and I suppose perhaps more relevantly for what we're doing, your career. Uh, Evan, just, just a quick question. Thanks for okay. sharing that. Uh, are we also thinking of, of uh, like, like 
so yeah I, i understand india is is not as of now like we do have some some meetups but it's rare uh, the the you know the frequency uh, as of now is is not something which which i've come across specifically and now as as you also know that the delhi chapter is is kind of closed i don't know i haven't seen any events so far uh, no, last uh, one closed about a year ago so yeah oh yes 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 so uh, any any thoughts on that like how do you see india in in the road map of business agility as as a forum how do you see india and, and especially the the frequency of events or or something yeah. like that so um let me be very open and transparent right so 2020 was the first year in 10 years i have not traveled to india right i've been to india every year since 2011 right sometimes conferences sometimes clients right um agile india uh, the one that the restrain runs down in um, bangalore every march i uh, was every march obviously 2020 yeah. um i i've been there almost every single year i i have i have such fondness for what he does and what deep d is doing and all of this now the we launched India has always been a key focus for us right but we have um about 40 different case studies from India um in fact in fact my favorite case study the one that if someone asks me for an example of like what a good case study looks like right i will actually give them the case study it's a company called yash packer uh they're a manu- they're a factory they do paper pulp paper processing right and they are by far my favorite business agility story in the library we have stories from indian startups we have stories from indian banks um so we have a decent amount of content from india and the surrounds sri lanka and bangladesh um really highlighting like what is business agility in that subcontinental region and context we ran two business agility conferences in 2018 and 2019 um we have decided not to run a conference again in india um and through no criticism of india um but the uh you have a very local culture right which means if i put a conference on in hyderabad right i will get hyderabadi attendance but very few from bangalore or chennai if i put it in chennai i will get very few from pune or delhi or bangalore if i put it in bangalore i it's it's no one wants to deal with bangalore traffic which i can understand so i don't get anyone else unfortunately um there is not a density at the moment that will support uh conferences in five different indian cities right yeah. so our focus in and that's not a criticism it's it's literally just the the culture of how things are working we did it twice um and it well it it didn't work out but that's not to say that we're not doing anything in india we're doubling down on the meetups um we are we just launched literally uh so last week or the week before um our bangladesh community um we have we continue to publish more and more stories and references from the region um in terms of companies indian in, in fact let me go a bit broader asia right is by far uh, the most the fastest growing region for business agility in fact post covid and we're a research organization so we do research I right. post covid north america went down 50 oh, sorry 10% um in terms of their overall agility right but asia right including india went up 25% post covid right this region is the fastest growing around the world so um the institute itself is going to be continuing to invest in um online uh engagements through and obviously through the meetups and everything else that we're doing in the region 
my push on you is uh, perhaps to to help grow some of this. Um, if if uh, sorry, if, where were you based? Were, were you Bangalore? Uh, no, I'm I'm based out of Delhi and here. Delhi, yeah. So so um, I, there was something that was in 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 Delhi, but the leaders life happens. They got busy, right? and so and so they didn't have the energy to to keep it going. Right? Maybe there's you and four other colleagues and and peers from around who want to be those new leaders. Maybe you can be, and this is to all of you, not just to you, um, Surya, but maybe there is that ability, maybe there's that passion to be that community heart, that community leader. So you can be a part of it as well. Cool, that helps. Thanks, thanks, Evan. Evan Naresh here. So you talked about the uh, different case studies and all that. So where can I get this, uh, uh, all different case studies and uh, where can I see the gist of it? If I would like to go through one, how do, how do I, how can I do that? Yeah. So let me put a link in the chat. So businessrealty.institute is our website slash learn is our library. Um, if you want the Yash Packer story, which as I said is by far yeah. my yes. favorite. Um, <laughs> I've got that one bookmarked. I can get that link in second. Um, nice. yeah. uh, we also have, uh, if you're also looking for other Indian stories, um, uh, Naresh Jain, uh, who I mentioned uh, was doing something there, gave us this. We have one from Padma in healthcare. I'm doing this from memory, so forgive me if. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Then, where is it? All right, so this is Naresh Jain's case study. So that's a good one. I, oh, I co wrote, I ghost wrote that with him. This is one about uh, agile HR in a healthcare organization. Um, by Padma, and then if you want to see video, uh, the videos from the previous Agile, uh, sorry, Business Agility India conferences. Actually, I think we only have one of them. I think we're missing, where are we? Sorry, give me a second. Um, there it is, Hyderabad. All right, and here are the videos from the earlier conference. Um, uh, unfortunately, um, there were audiovisual problems and we actually don't have the recordings from the 2019 conference, which is a huge shame because there was this really amazing talk by, um, uh, what was his name? Um, I know him, he's lived in Singapore, when I lived in Singapore. Uh, he, was a, he was the CEO of Singapore ThoughtWorks and came back to India to effectively take over a um, textile business, his family textile business. And um, there's a really, really good story about like bringing all that agility that he'd gone, uh, they'd gotten through ThoughtWorks into, into this um, uh, textile and sari business. Ah, yeah. I'll need to, I, I will remember who that is in like, <laughs> in a moment, but uh, just bear with me. <laughs> so, um, yes, uh, so those are so those are some of the Indian links that we have, the ones that I can uh, uh, get straight off the top of my head. Um, but all the material we have is under slash learn. Um, we also have, uh, so as an organization, we don't do individual certification. We do do company certification. Right. So um, we can certify an organization as like a certified agile organization. We have a very uh, a, a nuanced, mature look at organizational capability, business agility capability. Um, one that recognizes that an agile has an organization has both low and high agility simultaneously. And so it's not it's not good enough to say you're like like 3.7 agile uh, 
it's you've actually got to show the spread. You've got to show that I, this part, this much of the organization has low agility, and this part of the organization has high agility. And so the organization has a shape. So we also do organizational certification, um, which um, uh, if any of you are interested in, please do reach out to me. It's, uh, it's something that um, we only launched this year. So we're still very, uh, we've, we've done the first three. Um, so we're just sort of slowly ramping that up globally. So if that's something that's of interest, do, do let me know. More questions, come on. Send hey, Van, uh, uh, my name is Santil. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are, please go ahead. Okay, so uh, see, I run, a, uh, I primarily you know, work for an IT organization <clears throat> and I run a, run a, uh, a CRM practice you know, in my company. Um, so we do, uh, you know, design and develop uh, global uh, clients, I mean, uh, CRM solutions for global clients. And uh, this is all implementation and you know, maintenance of projects. Now, of course, you know, 80% of my engagements are, are running on Agile. So within this particular scope, uh, is there anything that you know, business agility can be plugged in? Uh, is there a framework or a methodology uh, which you know, can be brought in here? Yes, uh, well, uh, not a framework. All right. So first of all, there is no such thing as a business agility framework. Um, there are frameworks that will help develop agility and, and, and help you with the execution of some areas of business agility. But there are a process is a a process is a is simple or complicated at best. I can document it. I can describe the inputs and the outputs, and I can copy it. I can take one process from my company and apply it to another company. But an organization is a complex adaptive system. Right? There are way too many moving parts for any framework to ever um, like be the silver bullet. So we have not, and we will never create a framework for business agility. Um, we can help you see which frameworks help in different areas. Um, you want to uh, change how your budgeting process works, then we'll go look at beyond budgeting or go look at lean accounting um, or just rolling budgets. Um, you want to change HR? Well, there's about 20 different things that you can do in the HR space. But what we do have is this. Uh, and some of you may have seen this before. This is what we call the domains of business agility. This is not, it's not a framework in so much as it won't tell you um, how to do anything. What it is, is a model. It's, I call it the don't forget model. Because if you're transforming your organization, these are the different domains that you cannot forget, right? You have to have a focus on the customer, customer centricity. Right? You have to have some focus on workforce. Right? That's agile HR. That's how do you recruit? How do you um, incentivize? How, how do they work? Right? Partners, uh, you don't work alone. You have suppliers and distributors. You can only be, and Evan's theory of agile constraints. Right? You can only be as agile as your least agile part. And sometimes that's not even inside your own organization. Uh, if you have a supplier uh, um, who is a critical part of that, um, uh, that, that value stream and they have less agility than any part of your organization, they're your constraint. Right? The board of directors, not relevant for most because just it's hard to get to them. But if you're running an organization transformation, the board needs agility. Leadership, right? oh, sorry, leadership's over here, sorry. Um, people management. Uh, you need to have good skills in delegation uh, and people development. Uh, one team, communication. You've got to be able to align the organization into a common, uh, to a common goal. Strategic agility. Uh, your strategic plans uh, never last more than about a month. Right? So the question is, how do you create an adaptive, emergent strategic plan, one that is designed to change regularly? Individuals, right? growth mindset, you need to develop that. Ownership and accountability. Right? It's the opposite side to delegation. I, I can delegate, but if the people who I'm delegating to don't have the skill to take ownership, then it's not gonna work. Right? 
craft excellence. It does not matter how much agility you have if your teams aren't good at the core work. And this is something that we see quite a lot because um, uh, you have a lot of people who are, uh, there's a, a lot of organizations who have a skill problem and they start, it's too expensive to upskill a thousand software developers. Right? So they go hire a whole bunch of scrum masters and agile coaches because they think that an agile transformation will solve their problem. But in, in actuality, they just need a thousand developers to get a little bit better at their job. Right? So craft excellence is a key part. And then lastly, process agility, right? which is scrum, agile, right? that's a process. Budgeting process, uh, recruitment process, these need agility. Enterprise agility, and that's the linkage. So you've got the CRM like platform, right? but you don't exist in isolation to the rest of your organization. There are processes that feed in and things that go out. You've got to link in with sales. You've got to go link on the marketing and recruitment and finance and your vendors and your suppliers and dot, dot, dot. There's so many other moving parts. And so having agility in one process, a CRM process, uh, or a CRM development process isn't enough, right? Because you've got 10, 12, 15 other processes that link into it that need agility as well. And so that's where enterprise agility comes in. And then lastly, you've got strategic, sorry, uh, structural agility, which is how your teams are structured. So um, a big problem we have in most organizations today is that we base our organizational structure on a 1000 year old management model called the apprentice system right and the apprentice system makes sense if you are optimizing for skills transfer right so if i'm a junior blacksmith an apprentice blacksmith i will i will apprentice to a master blacksmith to learn to be a better blacksmith right and if i'm a junior developer reporting to a senior developer or a development lead then that makes sense if I am doing so to develop my skill. The problem is I don't need a cross-functional multidisciplinary team if I'm a blacksmith. I, I can shoe a horse by myself. I, well, I can't, but a blacksmith can. I, um, but a modern organization, there is not a single piece of work. There's not a single product pretty much that can be done by one person, right? um, or in fact, even one skill. Uh, it's why in technology, we've kind of merged dev and test and ops into single teams for most organizations because we want to reduce the handoffs. But the problem is right, we create these complex matrix structures because we have this old apprentice system fighting, uh, which is optimized for skills transfer, right? while we're trying to also optimize for flow of value. Right? So what a lot of organizations like to do is actually drop that functional hierarchy and start to structure themselves by say customer experience or customer journey. They're structuring themselves by something else right? that is, uh, reduces the number of handoffs between idea or request and delivery to the customer. Because every handoff you have in the system adds complexity and reduces agility. So what we want is to have as few hand, you'll never get to zero handoffs, but you want as few as possible, right? And a lot of that comes with your structural agility. So if you wanna know more about the domains, I will throw a link into the chat now. Um, the domains are, uh, again, it's all public information. You can access that. Um, there's some content, some of our videos are only available to members, um, but other things like the domains are, you can always see the domains, we're never going to restrict those. Um, so that's, that sort of thing will help you understand where you need agility in the system. And if you feel like because of the complexity of your work, right, you can't be agile where you are, maybe you can't use Scrum. Right? Maybe it doesn't make sense to, to define a two week sprint, right? but the system still needs agility. 
And there are other places that may be the constraint that aren't you, right? Because if you can't be agile, maybe it's actually because of something else that should be agile first. So go and have a look at that. And one of the reasons we created the domains was to help people identify those areas of the business that need that attention. Excellent, David. Thank you so much. So guys, uh, uh, that is that was our uh, last question for the session because, uh, yeah, we have reached the end of the session. I didn't realize what time was. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I would like to share with you guys that uh, we are privileged enough uh, to have even uh, in uh, during unconference days. So uh, he'll be available. So if you have more questions or you want to have discussions one on one, uh, you can join us there. So yeah, so thank you all for joining us and special thank to Evan for sharing uh, insights and uh, yeah, these are really helpful and I'm a fan of holistic approach of this business agility. And uh, yeah, so thank you. Thanks again. And uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Absolutely. And please, um, I've added my LinkedIn profile. So if you're not already, please connect with me on LinkedIn. My only request is please add a note I get about 40 to 50 LinkedIn connections a day. And I only try and connect with people who I, I, I know, like there's a reason to connect with. So just add a note saying, I saw you at Agile Agility today um, at, the, um, at, the, at the career boot camps, just so I know to accept your invitation request. Otherwise you might get a message from me going, hi, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, but that, that's me and please, uh, especially for those who ask questions, but anyone please reach out. And if you have further questions, i uh, always happy to answer them. And thank you, Charu, for helping to organize and keep me on time. <laughs> Thanks to you. Thanks, Evan. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. All right, then see you in the next session. Bye. Thank you.